Good morning to all of you. I, course coordinator and host faculty of this Gyan online course on social capital and health in India. Welcome all of you. I'm Muhammad Akram, professor of sociology at Department of Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh, India. It is my proud privilege today to host this meeting from Aligarh Muslim University. All of you might be aware of the fact that this Gyan program is a wonderful initiative of government of India, the Ministry of Education. This program is being conducted when the nodal agency is IIT Kharagpur. Indian Institute of Technology Kharagpur is one of the best institutions of India. It's our privilege that is at the nodal agency. Now we have Professor Miwako Hosoda as the foreign faculty of this program. Let me very briefly, let me very briefly introduce Professor Miwako Hosoda to the participants. Professor Miwako Hosoda is Professor of Saisa University, Japan. She has been conducting her sociological research through observing human relations in the healthcare field, using knowledge from her prior research on patient advocacy, healthcare policy, and public participation in medicine. She has been making collaborative efforts with local residents with illnesses and disabilities she had engaged. Together, they are continuing to seek out ways to help the recovery in their communities. Dr. Hosada was elected as president of International Sociological Association's Research Committee of Sociology of Health during the period 2018-23 and Asia Pacific Sociological Association during the period 2017-2020. He has published widely in health sociology and health science including vaccine-associated paralytic poliomyelitis in Japan, published by The Lancet in 2012, and the third edition of Researching Health, Quantitative and Mixed Methods, published by Sage in 2009. So I won't take much time to introduce her. I'm very sure that when Professor Miwako will start her lecture, everything will Thank become you. visible and known to all the participants. So I welcome Professor Miwako Hosada. She will she has prepared wonderful lectures for all the participants sitting in India. This is a wonderful topic that we all are getting engaged in, that is social capital and health in India. She has a wonderful experience of understanding health in the Western part of the world as well as in Japan. And we all know that Japan is having a wonderful human development index. This is one of the best countries in terms of the health indicators and human development. So we will learn a lot from Professor Miwako Hosada. So I welcome Professor Miwako Hosada on this Gyan one week online program on social capital and health in India. Professor Miwako Hosada, the stage is yours. You are most welcome. Thank you very much, Professor Mohammad Akram, for the introduction. Uh, namaskar. <laughs> Namaste. Aap kese hain? Mela nam Miwako Hosada hai. Wonderful. <laughs> Hello, uh, this is Miwako Hosoda from Japan. It is a great honor for me to have a lecture at the Department of Sociology, Alga Muslim University by the Gyan program. I truly appreciate Professor Mohammad Akram for arranging this wonderful opportunity. In this course, I will be Rectoring from a sociological perspective on social capital 
and social determinant of health, which is related on health issues. Through this course, I also hope to learn from you and from others about social capital and the wisdom and practice of protecting health in India. I think you will have the, my slide already, but I'd like to talk my presentation with my slide. So I will share the screen. Let me think. Let me do it. Can you see the screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, okay, good. Yes, Thank you. So today, uh, I'd like to talk about social capital health and health in India. Uh, before that, let me introduce myself. Actually, I have visited India twice in 2008 and 2015. I went to Hyderabad to attend the Leprosy Conference, International Leprosy Conference in 2008. And I went to Amritsar. It is located in between the India and Pakistan in 2015 to give it a lecture at Guru Nanak. Oh, wow. I was um, graduated from University of Tokyo in Japan in 1992. And then I received the PhD from that university in 2006. And at the same time, I had a uh, opportunity to study about health sociology and social medical science in the states, such as Columbia University and Harvard University. And there I learned uh, social determinant health and uh, human uh, development index. After coming back to Japan, I served as a professor of Seisa University. And from 2013 to 2012, I don't know, 2020, I worked as a vice president of Seisa University. It was a really a nice opportunity. So I, I could learn how to manage the university. In 2017, I became a president of Asia Pacific Sociological Association, and I organized the conference in Hakone, which is the main campus of the Seisa University it located. And currently, I am a president of International Sociological Association, the research committee of medical sociology of health. So uh, we have a world congress in this July and June. So if you have a chance, please come to the conference, which is held in Melbourne in Australia. I hope the Professor Muhammad Akram will be coming. He's one of the brilliant member of the research committee of sociology of health. <laughs> so my specialty is soci mainly sociology, but I studied at the School of Public Health in the States. So I expand my expertise to the public health as well. And also I studied uh, the bioethics and wrote uh, some textbook or the book about 
the bioethics in Japan and international before. So to summarize my research, uh, uh, the most of my research is started to encounter with the people living with various illness and disabilities. I have been making collaborative effort both domestically and internationally to seek out ways to help those individuals recover and empower them within their local community. You can see the pictures uh, the upper one is uh, uh, the leprous people with leprosy uh, colony. And when I visited Hyderabad, I had a chance to visit that colony. The middle one, uh, he's a, a person with the, the polio survivor. He's uh, we are celebrating his 80 years old uh, celebration. And the bottom one is the person with the chronic fatigue syndrome. It is kind of the discriminative uh, disease because uh, there are no bio. Uh, biomedical uh, test, you know, standard, standardized test. So people uh, say it is not a disease and they do not um, admire the people with such disease. So my research include medical sociology, such as associate nurse system issues and team medicine and experience of illness, such as stroke and palliative care and chronic fatigue syndrome. It is also called myalgic emphysitis. In the bioethic area, I made a, I conducted the research about brain death and organ transplantation in Japan and the States. And also the living donor transplantation is occurred and there are so many problematic issues. And also the treatment and withholding the severely disabled newborns and such kind of research ethics uh, might the research team as well. In terms of patient advocacy, I studied about the patient movement and the patient uh, associations, and also uh, sociology of healthcare policy. And also I'm curious about the global health and global public health, especially in the era of COVID-19 it is really important. Also, uh, as you may know, uh, Japan faced a um, devastated disaster in 2011. The Great Eastern Japan earthquake and tsunami associated with the uh, disaster. Uh, we faced uh, uh, the nuclear power plant accident caused by tsunami and it had a huge impact, the negative impact of the community, especially the community near the nuclear power plant, the Fukushima area. So I will mention about this uh, negative effect later in this course. So this is a preface of the, some of my uh, publication. So if you have a chance, uh, please uh, take a look at it. Of course, there are the book in Japanese, but 
many, some of them are written in English. I told my research started with the, the encounters of people with stroke or the other yeah, other disease like uh, uh, cancer and polio and chronic fatigue syndrome. So they that the people who I collaborating with. So some of them are uh, already uh, passed away, and some of them now staying in the nursing home. But still, I we have a contact with them, them or their families. I also uh, tried to connect the patient groups in Japan and internationally. When I was in the States, I made a contact with the Brain Injury Association and post polio Association and Chronic Fatigue Syndrome patient groups. Then I connect the both um, groups between United States and Japan, and uh, some of them visited the States. Can you see the picture on the bottom? And uh, the Japanese stroke survivor visited the, the stroke survivors group in Boston. And the upper left, uh, there are the, uh, the gentleman who are sitting on the wheelchair. He came from Pakistan to Japan and we made a good connection. And I also invited the, uh, the medical professional and expert of the disease, like uh, chronic fatigue disease. And also, we I uh, uh, make a interaction between the the professionals and the patient and the general public. And such the collaboration, we can find the way through the disaster and the the way of uh, resolve the social issues. So as I told, I studied in the state for eight, hour, eight years. The first, I went to the Columbia University School of Public Health. And then I moved to Boston and I studied at the Harvard School of Public Health as a, a, a research fellow. And so such a uh, the experience make me a lot of opportunity to make uh, uh, the, uh, the collaborative research in the uh, in the world, literally in the world. I have uh, uh, the Korean in Kenya and UK and Thailand, Bangladesh, Philippines. Australia, Brazil, and US. And I'm really happy if I have the, uh, the research collaborative opportunity with the researcher in India. So uh, now I will just start. Um, the lecture. So I have uh, seven opportunities, seven lectures uh, 
from today to until the February 16th. So today I will talk about the social patterning of health for the, the first one hour. And next one hour, I will talk about health system in Europe and US. And tomorrow, the day two, I will have a lecture on healthcare and human development experience from DPM. And also tomorrow, I will talk about the sociocultural determinant of health and health disparity. And the day after tomorrow, I have one hour lecture, cancer and other life threatening disease in contemporary context. And the last day, uh, lecture seven, I talk about human development index and public health. And lecture eight, uh, social movement, the social capital and health. I think you most of you are the student of the sociology department. Is it correct? <laughs> or uh, the, the many of us, you are studying at a graduate school. So uh, I got a chat answer. Econo oh, some are the PhD from economic department. Okay, so, so that is good <laughs> because I prepare for the basic knowledge about the sociology. <laughs> So I'd like to explain sociology before going into the main topic. <laughs> the same subject sometimes can look different depending on where you play your perspective. Can you see two pictures? What do you see? I believe that sociology about trying to clarify how we see what phenomena and what kind of reality we live in. In such case, it is important to doubt common sense and what is taken for granted, such as this is what is generally said, but from this point of view, it may not be like this. And it is also important to wonder what the phenomena would look like from a different standpoint, region or era. I also believe that sociology is a study of breaking down one's own common sense, prejudice and stereotypes. Another important idea is that society is created by society. Society is not something that is given to us, but a group of people who have a time and it may who have a desire to do this or to be that way, and who want to change to the current society. Society is not something that is given to us, as you see, and people can be an alternative society, can make the alternative society. Of course, it will take a lot of time and it may fail. But I think it is part of sociology to know that such a mechanism exists. One of the under Ryan's idea is the concept of social constructionism. This is the idea that the society is composed of us living in reality, rather than having an objective viewpoint 
Camomile among us. We can learn about reality and the real world and ordinary people. So um, what do you see anyway? So the left side, left side, uh, Professor Agram showed the picture. <laughs> so can I ask you? I see the name of someone. <laughs> uh, about the Fala Ashura, what do you see? <laughs> and maybe you can not make a mute by yourself. If you cannot make uh, a mute by yourself, you can uh, write a chat box. Yes, old women. Yeah, the old women. Uh, you know the the side face of old women. How about it? Do you see another thing in this picture? Only the old women. You can make the different perspective. Anyone is okay. A young lady, yes. Yeah, I think so. Uh, the young lady, you know, looking behind like this. <laughs> so, same picture show two different uh, appearance. So uh, the social phenomena is the same. The reality is different from different perspective. Thank you very much for the answer, uh, the Farah Ashra. So next, how about uh, the right picture? Someone right here? What do you see? <laughs> yeah, maybe you already know, if you focus on the white side, you can see some vase or trophy. However, if you, ah yes, yes, focus on the black side, you can see two person facing together, correct? So, um, the social phenomena is like this. If your standpoint is different, you can see different reality. So uh, it is really important to imagine the different position and the people in the different idea and the different standpoint. Okay, let's move forward. So this is a basic concept of social constructionism, I believe. So by the way, what is health? So are you healthy? Are your family healthy? According to um, the definition of World Health Organization, health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So um, it is easy to imagine the physical damage and physical uh, disease. However, there are another aspect of health. Health is greatly related to 
physical health, not only physical health, but mental health and good human relations and stable social life. So health has a social aspect. Also, um, the nutritionally balanced diet and good sleep and moderate exercise are also very important of health. And at the same time, not being activities, uh, not being poor and not being un employed and having good relationship with others are also very uh, much related to health. This is connection is all social activities of human health or public health. The, is referred to as the social determinant of health. So social determinant health uh, sometimes uh, described like this rainbow model. So to understand what the social determinant of health is, uh, you can see in this uh, the dark greens and white head rainbow border of health. The red center, the age, sex, heredity. The red center is what we are basically born with such as gender, age, and heredity. And it is not easy to change. And the next orange area is lifestyle and habits. And yellow are family and community, something related with your family and community. And the green area, it is educational attainment, employment status, housing condition, healthcare system, and sanitary condition. The outmost purple area are political and economic and international condition. These various social factors affect people's health. For example, income, race, the country or place where you live, the type of work you do, you do, and other factors can cause a difference in the person's health, especially uh, life expectancy. This is called health disparity. I can talk a uh, more detail in the uh, the different day maybe the day fifth no no day no no day, not the day fifth day third okay I anyway I will come back this rainbow model later and among sociologists. Um, this kind of the social determinant health concept is very helpful to understand the social aspect of health and uh, from the medical sociology of health. And so the sociology uh, that focus on health and medicine are said to sociology of health, as you say. Sociology has explored the interaction between society and health. The discipline seeks to epically illuminate the social structure of issues relating to medicine, health, and illness from the micro 
meso to micro level. By applying a quantitative and qualitative research method, we can see the micro level is focused on individual and family or neighborhood, relatively small area. And the meso level, it focused on company or school or hospital or community. And the macro level, it is more broad area, like an institution or a nation or international. All these are the field of sociology. And also it includes studies about medical and social welfare professionals, the patient and elderly, or family members, volunteers, the general public and health administration authorities and life science companies and other key stakeholders. Basically, sociology of health cover a lot of stakeholders uh, every stakeholder in, who are related with health or, and medicine. And Arthur Kreimer, he is a medical anthropologist and also medical doctor. So he defined the difference between illness and disease. It is important concept to understand the, uh, the sociology of health and disease and illness. The disease is, um, is defined as a unique human and uh, manifestation of failure at the cellular tissue or organ level. So disease means um, the something like a biomedical uh, phys physical Stages. On the other hand, the illness is the experience of the sick person as seen from the perspective of the people affected. So this is a unique human experience of loss of capacity, dysfunction, and interference with life. Do you uh, understand the difference between the disease and illness? So usually uh, the, the medical doctor or the life science uh, research, they focus on the disease. However, in sociology, we mainly focus on the illness. The disease and illness also have micro, meso, and macro level. Think of drug development, for example. There are many levels. The level of molecular biology, research teams, clinical trials involving the people, and marketing and improvement, improving people's quality of life. So if you want to study about the sociology of health, you can choose the levels, macro, meso, or macro, or the, the stakeholders. You want to focus on the medical profession, or patients or general public or researcher, biomedical researcher. There are many um, possibilities to make a research on health area. So I would like to invite you to uh, conduct the research of health sociology. Yeah, it is really um, interesting area, I think. <laughs> Um, 
This is also the overview of disease and illness. If you have a chance, please uh, read the book written by Arthur Kreimer, The Illness Narratives. It is kind of the old book, which was published in, first published in 1988. However, it still has a, a good uh, information and I, we can learn from this book. Yeah, Kreiman defined the difference between illness and the disease. The illness experience is experience from the sick as seen from the perspective of person affected or from a sociological point of view. From a medical or natural science perspective, it is disease. As a crime man also refers to illness and disease as a social form of illness and to illness from the perspective of natural science or medicine. There are different aspects of illness from the natural science or medical point of view. And also uh, after there are many research based on the di difference between disease and illness and the new concept like uh, illness trajectory or illness experience are uh, invented. And recently, uh, the concept of a patient journey is referred not only the patient, but also medical professionals. Because medical professionals recently recognized the patient experience is very important. Before, um, professional autonomy and the professional knows the, everything about the illness, they believe so, but however, the patient experience is more important to understand the illness and to make recovery of the people. To summarize, sociology of health explore the interaction between society and health. The discipline seeks to empirically illuminate the social structure of illness relating to medicine, health, and illness from the micro to macro level by applying a quantitative and qualitative research method to study medical and welfare professionals, the sick, the elderly, family member, volunteers, the general public, health administration, authorities, science companies, and other key stakeholders. Then, uh, the academic field of public health, it is so related with the sociology of health. The theme of uh, public health is also overlap the sociology of health. The public health, people study and put into practice what can be done to eliminate health disparity and ensure that people are equally health in this way. Of course, you are many of them and uh, sociologists. Sociology also aim to eliminate the stigma or social disparity and social inequality. So the public health and sociology of health uh, has a common goal, I would think. So it is important to know the current state as various health-related field and what approaches can be lead the better health in each field. Incidentally, such area include medicine, lifestyle, science, technology, environment, policy, economy, safety, work environment, 
discrimination, inequality, disaster, etc. Now, so let us let me start summarize what we have learned here. Health is not merely the absence of disease, but also a state of physical, mental, and social well-being. And to protect the, our health, we need to approach it from many different fields. So uh, these are the theme of sociology of health, relationship between healthcare providers and patients, relationship between healthcare providers. This is steam-based medicine. Yeah, sometimes it is called team-based medicine. Or disease and disabilities experienced by patient themselves. And illness for the patient, which is different from disease as seen by medical professionals. So uh, this is a figure I made. It is a change in the way patient and professional. And recently, many uh, researchers does not use patient. Instead, they use survivors or participant because patient has a connotation to be passive and weak. However, uh, patient, people with and uh, illness or disability, um, the, uh, the individual who has a pride and empower, empowered. So sometimes uh, some researchers uh, prefer to use survivors or participants. Anyway, so this is a, so this figure is the summary of the changing um, status of patient and professionals. So before, it depends on the country, uh, the relationship, how, how much uh, change have been done from the professional dominance or patient engagement. So I will talk about the Japanese case. So before um, the medical professional, like a medical doctor has a power in the, uh, the field of medicine. Sometimes it is called professional dominance. This is a concept of the, uh, the Elliot Freed. And in Japan, it is um, almost uh, before 1990s. In this um, term, uh, professional, it has a power and it is a physician who knows best about that disease. And hospital has a hierarchical structure with doctor at the top. In this uh, era, patients are just following the advice of the medical professionals and medical professionals determine the way of cure or um, the the decision making are almost uh, thoroughly done by the medical professional, and it is called the uh, paternalistic medicine. But after that, from 1990s, uh, the concept of team based medicine was introduced and interdisciplinary collaboration could be one of the uh, good method.
in the West, Western country like uh, states or the European countries, it was little earlier in the 1980s or 1970s. It was a time of collaboration among other professionals uh, between the medical uh, doctor or nurse or some other medical uh, staffs. The importance of informed consent, informed consent in which patients are provided with information and allowed to make their own decision was emphasized. It is sometimes called patient self-determination or patient self-decision making. Now, I think we are at the stage of patient engagement. Patients also participate in healthcare as parties concerned. Various stakeholders will participate. In this context, the patient evolved with the, will be empowered and decision-making like informed consent will not be thrown in the patient. The direction is toward shared decision-making. Shared decision-making means everybody thinks about what is the best for the patient rather than throwing the decision to the patient. Nevertheless, some patient may ask for the decision to be made, and this may be done through team medicine, and they are likely to be the parallel area. And all this change, many um, factors are take, uh, taken roles, like a, uh, the development of a bioethics and the patient right movement and the democratization of medicine. And also the patient empowerment is occurred. So I'm wondering which stage in the Indian uh, medical status or the people with illness and disability in India. Maybe we will have some time to discuss about it. Yeah, I'd like to uh, hear about your opinion. And this is the figure of the interdisciplinary collaboration. Before a patient is located in the center and many medical professionals uh, working for the patient. But now uh, people started to think the patient is also the member of the team medicine and the, the patient is the collaborator to solve the problems. So, uh, this kind of the interdisciplinary and uh, the multi-stakeholder collaboration can be the um, good medical pro practice in the recent year. Also, uh, the Patient is uh, for the people or patient staying in the hospital, and but just look at the people in the hospital, it is not um, 
successfully、uh, take care of the patient. So, medical professionals started to think they need to see and know the patient who came to the hospital before the people living in the community. And also, medical professionals want to see the patient after the hospitalization. So, they are interested in the transition to the community and want to recognize how people live in the community and how they can and think how they can help the people. Uh, to live in the community without any、uh, physical、uh, problems and social problems. So it covers a lot of、um, factors of the social aspect. Of course, it is kind of the ideal type of the healthcare system. How That create curious about what it's going to be. And also, I would like to know the status in the India too. So,、uh, this is、um, the, what I want to tell you in this lecture one the social patterning of health. So, if you have any questions and c o m m e n t It would be very nice for me to hear such kind of your feedback. Thank you very much. So, if you have any comments or questions, Or you can write、uh, the comment on the chat box. Thank you. Maybe <laughs> you need to have a 10 minutes break or so. <laughs> Professor Akram, are, there? are you there? No? Okay, so let's take a 10 minutes break、uh, before going to the lecture, too. Okay. Oh, I have、uh, the, the message from a chat box. Yes, I will talk about the illness behavior and the sick role later. Thank you very much for your comment. Okay, so let's have a 10 minute break. We will start 10 minutes later.、Uh, see you later. So, dear participants,、uh, hope you enjoyed very well the first lecture delivered by Professor m i w a k o h o s i d a ma'am.、Uh, and now we will go for the second lecture. 
आई होप दैट प्रोफेसर मीवा को हुसदा हैज टेकन अ लिटिल ब्रेक बिकॉज ही नीड अ लिटिल ब्रेक आफ्टर वन आवर्स रिगोरस लेक्चर सो सून शी विल स्टार्ट दी सेकेंड लेक्चर एंड यू कैन मेक ए list of questions which are coming to your mind after listening to the first lecture right because we will have a tutorial class after the completion of first and second class and as i have already shared the second class will run in continuity after this first class and then the tutorial classes will start at 12:15 pm in the tutorial classes basically we will have two parts the first part that is the first hour of the tutorial class will be engaged by professor miwako hosada answering your questions your queries and elaborating some of the other points and the second half of the tutorial basically will be joined by the coordinator and the co coordinator and here this is going to be a very interesting part we will invite the participants to make a short presentation of the learning that they have completed in today's lecture so do prepare your own short notes right so that you can make your presentation in the second half of the tutorial because we all need to understand that learning is not a one way process learning is a two way process we learn when we listen and at the same time we learn when we respond to that very learning right so this gyan courses are very open platform these provide great flexibility in the mode of learning and we have included this specific model of tutorial so that you can respond to what you have learned simultaneously right yes we are waiting for uh, professor miwako to meanwhile so long professor miwako is coming back uh, actually so we will have a 10 minutes break so i will be back in 7 minutes okay right man right man right so now i would like to uh, discuss few other things that i was supposed to discuss during the beginning of the class but i was aware of the fact that that you all are impatient to listen to the foreign faculty right so the few things that i wanted to discuss as a host faculty of this program and as a course coordinator are the mode of operation of these classes and the assessment part the first thing that was very difficult for me to handle till yesterday night was to ensure the participation of all the interested candidates we all know more than 100 candidates basically applied for this course the gyan portal literally 140 applications i received and there were many students or people who were interested who wanted to join but they could not get their registration at the gyan page completed by the due time that created some problem and hurdle i am feeling extremely sorry for those participants who could not join the program because of that technical hurdle but that is again part of life my simple message to all those candidates is this that that gyan portal is basically hosting hundreds of wonderful programs and courses if you got registered for this program 
or you tried to get registered for this program and unfortunately could not join this program, then you are not at loss at all. Because now you got exposed to a wonderful platform. You can see multiple courses related to your in area of interest. So explore the courses and join those courses. GAN registration is a one-time phenomenon. You have invested rupees 500 at the time of registration, but that is a one-time phenomenon. Now, the second thing, the second thing is this, the second thing is this, that there will be a kind of assessment and this assessment is basically layered. As I have discussed in the group earlier also, participation and attendance is one very important factor. All the participants are required to attend all the session. We are actually recording the videos and your participation is getting recorded, right? So you need to ensure your participation in all the classes and the tutorials. That is one criteria. Second criteria is the level of your activeness during the program. And that will get reflected during the tutorial sessions. Because the lecture part, we will not disturb. Resource persons have too many things to share with you. But you can, of course, write your questions in the chat box. And then in the tutorial, you are basically at the limelight. You can ask questions. You can share your own observations. You can clear your doubts. If you have any future planning related to research in this particular area, and if you have made or prepared any presentation, you can talk about those things. Whatever difficulty you have been witnessing in this area, you can basically get benefited by the resource persons in exploring those ideas. So that is very important and that is also part of the assessment. Then we have included a five or six minute presentation by the candidates, right? So from today, we will start this thing. Anybody who is comfortable in the topics presented today can make his or her presentation in the second part of the tutorial. And we will maintain a record of those things. And those things will get included in the assessment. So although I am not making it mandatory for all participants to make presentation because some participants do, uh, do feel some difficulty in uh, speaking in English. So I will uh, give some liberty to those students, but definitely that will affect their grading also. So if you are motivated, even if your language is poor, you can make your best effort to make some kind of presentation also during the tutorials. And finally, we will have presentation of uh, submission of assignments. You can select any topic of your choice out of the topics that are discussed here. And you need to submit your assignment on the last date of the course, right? So our course is a starting, rather has started on 13th, 13th of February, 14th, 15th, then 16th, 17th, 18th. We'll have the lectures and the tutorials till 18th. And then we will have a special session on 19th where we will take account of all the assignments and any issue related to the assignment or any other query that is still exist that may be still existing in your mind right so we will have this course till 19th and submission of the assignment will be mandatory on 19th of february please note these dates these are important so Ultimately, you have to attend all the classes. You have to actively participate in the tutorial classes. You have to make presentations during the tutorials. And you have to submit one comprehensive assignment by the end of the course 
rather uh, one date extended till 19th of February. So your course will run from 13th to 19th of February. I hope you all have uh, understood the things that I have communicated. If there is any confusion to any student, then he or she can ask by unmuting himself or herself. Do you have any query or question? You can unmute yourself or you can write in the chat box. Okay, I'm seeing. Sir. Yes. Sir, good morning, sir. Good morning. Sir, can we have a schedule of the daily, every day's daily schedules so that yes, we can yes. plan accordingly? Yes, yes, we had the schedule in the brochure itself. Today, tomorrow, day after tomorrow, we are running the course as per the schedule. There is one modification in the schedule because of the availability of the resource person. So we have modified that. But the first day, second day, third day will run as per the schedule. I will sub, I, I will post the schedule. The again in the group, the WhatsApp group that we have created for this, right? But today's lectures are basically as per the already printed schedule. Is this okay? Thank you, sir. Okay, welcome. Any other query? So no more queries. Now we have Professor uh, Mivako Hosoda, ma'am, foreign faculty, back to this meeting. So over to Professor Mivako Hosoda, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor Akram, to introduce the whole uh, series of lecture and the assignment. <laughs> so the student uh, to write some teas or make a presentation that, that might be a huge work <laughs> but yeah after um taking this course maybe you can um how about the method to see the health status and how to um how is the what is a challenge or you to to face in the health issues so next, uh, the lecture two, I just to talk about the health system in uh, the Europe and US. So I'll share the screen. Can you see the screen? Yes, yeah. Thank you very much. So, um, so health system. Actually, each country has their own health system, and health system is so related with the policy of each country, and also it's all has a huge relationship between the national budget. So, how much money do the and one country use for the health issues. There are many ways to, to think about the health system. And usually, uh, I can hear some of the noise. <laughs> okay. So health system and the health outcome is considered as a life expectancy and infant mortality rate. So um, before going to the European and US health system, we will see some, uh, the, some of the data from the OECD library. So this is the life expectancy at birth by sex. Uh, it is uh, 2015. So 
so how do you think to see this data? Uh, the OECD average is 80.6. So this is the, uh, the, you know, the life expectancy at birth. So the people who, mm, how long, it means the, how long people live. And the average is 80.6. And let's see the PM, it is, um, 83.9, but this is average. And if you see the women, it is almost 87 years old. This is the life average of life expectancy in Japanese women. And men is 82 or 81 or so, and the average is 83.9. It's almost 84 years old. And how, how about India? It is, uh, according to this data, it's 63.3. It's almost um, 20 years shorter than the OECD average. So which country is the long life expectancy? Of course, Japan and the Spain, Switzerland, Italy, Australia, Iceland, France, Luxembourg, Norway, Sweden, Israel, Korea, New Zealand, Canada, etc. Many of the European countries uh, got a long life expectancy over 80. And it's interesting. The United States, they don't, the United States, they don't reach the average. You can see the United States, the life expectancy is 78.8. 78.8. It's um, under the, the average. Many people are wondering, including me, the, the expenditure of, for the health, the United States is highest. That means they use a lot of money for protecting health. However, the life expectancy is not so long. So this is kind of the uh, challenge of the United States. Anyway, uh, many European countries uh, has a life, long life expectancy, and I think it is worse uh, looking over the system in European countries. And another um, indication of the health system is infant mortality rate. This is uh, also from the OECD library and it shows the uh, infant death per 1,000 baby. In Jap Japan, uh, 0.7, that means um, to only two, only almost two baby are die in thousand baby. And how about India? It's pretty high. 
32. There are many, I think may, you may have uh, many you know, the estimated reasons like uh, um, hygiene of the uh, delivery environment and also the um, nutrition for the babies and uh, the number of the midwives and the OBGYN. So, So please uh, consider uh, the reason and please consider how to improve the status, the current status. And the average of uh, the OECD is 3.5. And it is same, the uh, the many European countries, they have the low infant mortality rate. And the United States, on the other hand, it is also have high mortality rate compared to the average of OECD country, it's 4.8. Oh, let's go next. So this is the book which was written in Espin Andersen. He's a Danish sociologist and he proposed a typology of welfare capitalism in the attempt in attempt to classify contemporary Western welfare states as belonging to one of three world of welfare capitalism. It is also published a pretty uh, long time ago, 1990s, but still it has a, a remarkable insight. So if you have a chance, please uh, read it. And Espin Anderson proposed uh, three uh, typology that is uh, liberal or cooperative and social democratic. And this is a kind of the, uh, the table. You can see uh, the, the characteristic of three typology of welfare states. So we will come back later. And this is the map of the social welfare states. The red one is uh, social democratic regime. You can see the Nordic, Nordic country, Sweden and Norway and Denmark they are categorized as a social democratic regime. Um, you can see the red, red colored countries. Then you can see the green colored countries. This is a conservatism regime. It is also called the continental European type. Uh, France and Germany and Finland and Italy are the same category as a conservatism regime. Also, uh, Japan is colored green uh, because Japanese uh, system are was introduced from Germany. So the healthcare system is kind of similar to German. The Japanese healthcare system is kind of similar to German. And the last three, uh, liberal regime. Um, 
that is carrot in blue. UK, Australia, and the states, the North American countries are categorized in this uh, region. So uh, let's see each by each. The first, social democratic region. It's mainly the Nordic countries. It has universal healthcare system. And universal healthcare system promotes the equality of high standards rather than equality of minimal means. So this implies the co-modifying welfare service. So um, they reduce the division introduced by market-based access to welfare service, as well as primarily socialize the cost of caring for children the elderly and helpless instead of them waiting until the family capacity to support them. And that means um, they uh, support the people who are in the market failure under emphasis of market function. And they emphasis on public system function to make equality. And universal healthcare coverage are realized. That means um, they have the and they use a uh, tax for funding resource. And in this social democratic region, freedom of individual from market is um, emphasized. And the traditional family and local community are not so considered. For example, uh, in social democratic region, they uh, realize the child care and elderly care by um, socialized. That means not only family take care of their children and elderly, but the social sector take care of the children and elderly. That is called uh, socialized care. So uh, the characteristic of social democratic region is kind of uh, the socialized care and, and uh, universal healthcare coverage. The next one, uh, conservatism regime. The conservative regime, which are typically shaped by traditional family values and tend to encourage family-based assistant dynamics. It is very different from Nordic regime, right? And social insurance is a model typically excludes no working wives and family benefit encouragement of food. So in this regime, uh, the healthcare um, expenditure was uh, covered by insurance. Remember the Nordic model, Nordic regime, they use tax for healthcare, but uh, the conservative regime, they use insurance system. However, uh, in these countries, including Japan, uh, the healthcare insurance is mandate for uh, citizens. So everybody should 
pay the premium for the insurance because it is obligation. So there are not so much difference between the taxation and the mandate um, social insurance system, I think. However, uh, to the, to see the system, uh, there are the difference. And in this regime, gender roles are divided. Sometimes the traditional family role are applied for this uh, conservatism regime. Of course, it has been changing, but still, uh, the, the traditional gender role, like a mother role or father role, uh, existed. And the state assistant will be typically only step in when the family capacity to aid its members is exhausted. So um, the child care and elderly care are supposed to do by the family in this region. And just in case the family are too tired and exhausted, the social sector cover the child care and elderly care. So, for sure, the commodification and the stratification of labor force is occurred in this model. And the last one is liberal regime. This is called Anglo Saxon type. The so liberal regime characterized by modest means test assistance and target at low income and usually working class recipient. So our liberal in the liberal regime, uh, mainly uh, the so society uh, to take care for the people in poor status or people in low income and the people in the average life style are supposed to, to manage their independent living by themselves. So individuals are responsible for the result of their own decisions and activity. And sometimes it is called a minimum welfare states. So minimum welfare states are uh, very limited social security and only support the people in the vulnerable. And once um, people get some the welfare benefits, people need to have a means test. Uh, that means uh, the people does not have any um, the money or any uh, house, house or place of living. They, in that state status, they can get the uh, welfare sub and healthcare insurance is also not mandatory, but it is a little bit uh, changed in the 1990s. So uh, please uh, take a look at these three types as uh, the ideal type, like uh, just a typology. And in this case, so what do you think uh, that India should be or followed? So let me see uh, the detail of the UK system and the US system. 
uh, before that, so let's see the, uh, this table. So this is, is the summary of the three regime, liberal regime, conservative regime, and uh, social democratic regime. And you can see the degree or model of the commodification. So in the liberal regime, free market as a central institution. And um, the conservative regime, Sorry. Uh, intermediate level of demo uh, the commodification and the social democratic regime, the level of the commodification is And the system of social stratification in liberal regime, protection of the the poor, but stigmatization of free riders. Strong economic inequalities, but more permeable boundaries between social class. So, Madam? Yes? Uh, what, what is the meaning of decommodification? Uh, decommodification is a uh, kind of, uh, the, as I said, the child care or the family care or elderly care, um, the, uh, so usually family care, they don't pay. However, um, if people go to the nursery school or institutionalized uh, care, they pay. So, um, so uh, the, for example, the social democratic mod model, they provide the social, uh, the socialized care and, and the, like uh, for, for the children and the elderly. So, um, they, you know, the, the care provider uh, gain the money in the, not the market, but the social, in the social, social system. So, um, it is totally different from the market value, but, um, they, they not sell, but they use their ability for the, the social services. So that is the, the phenomenon of decommodification. So uh, do you understand what I mean? Yes, madam. Thank you, madam. So in the other hand, the liberal model, they use the free market. So they buy the child care or uh, the elderly care. So the, the price is so high. <laughs> it's because it is not provided by the, the, you know, the public sector, but a private sector. So that means the free market and in cooperative like a, a conservatism religion, it is in between the decommodification and free market. Yeah, thank you very much. So if you don't understand the uh, something, the word or concept, please don't hesitate to ask me. So, so now um, we see the uh, 
system of social stratification and in the conservatism regime and solidarity between equals, intermediate degree of inequality, but social boundary stronger in parable. And in the social democratic, social democratic regime, strong collective consumption. The economic inequality is minimal, very small, and strong fluidity between classes. And I can see some opinion from the chat box that India should come forward for mandatory insurance for everybody. Yeah, yeah, it is really important to have the, the universal health care coverage to ensure the equal um, health care services for everybody. Yeah, I truly agree with this idea. Uh, what is free rider? Free rider means uh, the person who are not um, yeah who <laughs> who only get a benefit without doing their obligation. So that in this case, free rider means. Um, the person who doesn't work and low income, but get a uh, social service. So they don't work or they don't have much, you know, effort. It is considered, but get some benefit from the the government. So. It is sometimes called free rider. Even it's not free rider, even they are really you know, vulnerable and uh, yeah, have some problem, but many people say they are free rider and stigmatize them, blaming them. So do you understand what I mean? <laughs> okay. Yes, ma'am. Good. good, good. Thank you. Thank you. So let's move. Madam, one yes. more question. Yes. Uh, what What is market failure that you had mentioned in the previous slide? Market, ah, market failure. failure. Market failure is uh, this one. There are many failures, market failures or government failures. This is the failure of the, you know, some something or civil society failure as well. Um, the market failure means um, if like like the United States, as I said, um, so in in that in that regime, so they emphasize the market function because um, you know if the person who has a lot of money can get a uh, good health care. Is it good social system? And oh, it, in this case, if people does not have much money, they cannot get a, a good health care. So it caused the social crisis. So that is market failure. If people uh, think the market prioritize the market, the consequence is devastated. Sometimes um, the people believe the market is the good system. If, um, you know, in maybe there are some of the, the, uh, the student from the economic department that you may know better. 
that uh, actually ma'am market yeah. failure is the process when uh, government interfere in clearing the market the uh, private market cannot fix the actual prices what should be for clearing the market due to government intervention as a minimum wages and uh, uh, when minimum wages are uh, decided by the market by the government uh, market cannot clear due to uh, the right wages Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, there are. Uh, I cannot hear. Uh, Could you please uh, talk louder? Sorry, I cannot hear you. Good. So, I changed my the volume. Sorry. Am Am I not audible? Excuse me. Am I not audible? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you, but your voice is sounds me very small. So it is better for you to write a chat box so I can recognize what you say. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. Sorry. Yeah. Now I'm sharing the screen and I cannot, you know, control the sounds volume. So you, you are writing now? Oh, let's see. So market failure is a situation when the market is not able to clear it by demand and supply force due to, yeah, it is a definition of the market failure, yeah, right. And in this case, so as I told you, the market failure is, you know, in this case, we are focusing on the health. So, um, the, yes. If we depend on only the market you know, initiative, we cannot protect the health of the people. So that is a problem. Okay. So let's see on the UK model now. So, so you can provide the universal healthcare through a single payer system and primarily provide by national health service, so NHS. This is a tax, the source was tax. And so everybody uh, affordable. Uh, appropriate health care service. And this uh, NHS National Health Service was established in 1948 and continue to operate today to provide equitable service to meet the medical needs per patient. And almost 25.2% of the national budget is invested in the NHS. So it is huge system. And people in the UK are very proud of having this system. And sometimes it is called the, the healthcare service from the cradle to the grave, <laughs> graveyard. This is the concept of the NHS. It is so, so this is 
and you cannot see well. However, yeah, yeah, please, um, you can easily find this, um, this figure through the internet if you Google NHS concept. <laughs> you can find it. So the what I want to show you is so NHS. Uh, covering the many aspects of health, not only the medical care, but also uh, the community care and um, also the, uh, the people with disability and the, the, the baby birth and also the many uh, sector or related with protecting the health. And so let me see, uh, lecture by 12 noon. When do you call the lecture? So we will have 15 minutes. Okay. So we will finish in almost 10 minutes. So let's So this is the flow of the budget. So they use yeah, you can find it internet too. So let's move forward. So let's see the US. Um, sorry. US is only developed nation without a system of universal health care. Actually, it is um created the universal health care coverage is started 2010 from the Barack Obama administration. But um, still there are many people who are in, uninsured. And healthcare is normally provided by many distinct organizations made for insurance companies, healthcare providers, hospital health systems, and independent providers. So this is the flow of pound of US healthcare. So it's part, part, partially from the, uh, the government, may, which was based on the taxation, but many of them from the privatized pri private sector. And only uh, Medicare and the Medicaid is here. Medicaid and the Medicare. Medicaid for the low income family and the Medicare is for the elderly. They are provided by the, the public sector. So um, the Medicaid play a central role for the other uh, health care system for the people in low income status. And also the ch children. And uh, the ch change of the American health care system or the occurred from the 2008, um, the presidential election between the Obama and Mitt Romney. Obviously, Obama is Democrat and Mitt Romney is Republican. And Democrats want to uh, promote healthcare reform law. And 
implement the universal healthcare coverage. And on the other side, people want to repeal healthcare reform because uh, the, they insist the American has a uh, right to right and the freedom for not having a healthcare insurance. So they have an uh, objection to have the mandate healthcare coverage. Because universal healthcare coverage means the mandate. <laughs> However, Mitt Romney used to be the governor of Massachusetts. And what did he do? He signed the healthcare reform in Massachusetts when he was governor of the, uh, the, Massachusetts, the state of Massachusetts in 2006. So only the in that era, Massachusetts uh, had uh, universal health coverage in the United States. And it this or discussion divide two sides in the state. Some are pro, you know, want to uh, implement the universal health coverage, and some are not. But finally, 2010, President Obama signed the Affordable Healthcare Act, which allowed uh, people to have the mandate healthcare insurance. So this is uh, uh, the item of the Affordable Care Act obligation to join the healthcare insurance and the regulation of private insurance companies insurance. And so please take a look. And also uh, it is very important to have the, the pre, uh, people allowed to have the insurance with pre-existing con condition. That means even if people had a disease, they can get a health insurance. This is a big change, big, you know, the change and improvement. So this is the last slide for the, the lecture two. The American author, author Judy Pico addressed the difference between equality and equity. Equality is threatening everyone the same, but equity is taking difference into account so everybody has a chance to succeed. So you can see the difference between equality and equity. Even um, they have equality, you know, they equally have the same height box, the shortest one cannot see the game. However, equity, that means everybody has a chance to do and a chance to success. So the little one can have two balls and the middle high boy has one box. But it is okay because they have equality um, possibility. And if you go to the more uh, improved status, it is called inclusion. There are no barrier for everybody. The body can have the inclusive status. So, which one do we uh, you know, go forward? I think the inclusive society will be the one who, which we are seeking for. So please uh, consider about what type of health 
and health related system we are going to you know aim so thank you very much for your attention so this is the end of my lecture for the today thank you very much thank you very much professor miwako Hosoda, for a wonderful lecture i think the last slide has summarized the entire lecture it's about the system. If we remove the barriers from the system, then that will create the inclusive society. Wonderfully presented the ideas and the thoughts. And I would like to share with the participants that, that we are dealing with huge topics, basically. Health system is something which engages multiple social sciences. You have economics, you have political sociology or the political system or the political science there and the political economy and then sociology and then lots of basically ethnographic and anthropological understanding. So Professor Hosada, using her immense experience in the field has tried to make you understand this, these big topics within a short span of time. I'm sure you have many questions. We will meet again after 15 minutes to address those questions. I hope Professor Miwako will join us after 15 minutes to address the questions of the participants. And later on, we will give opportunity to the participants to make a presentation on whatever they have understood. So with these notes, I'm closing the meeting today and we will meet after 15 minutes in the tutorial classes. Thank you very much. Thank you to all the participants and the foreign faculty, Professor Miwako Hosoda from Saisa University, Japan. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, and